Hi guys, this is Raoul Monk, founder and director of Flume Sales Training. Today on our Flume Sales Chat, we're joined by James Mazurier. Is that right, James? Correct. No, no. getting that wrong. People get Raoul wrong the whole time, so I feel your pain. Um, James is the head of partnerships over at The Drum, and today is going to be sharing some best practice around how do you keep high performance in your teams and those teams driven when they are remote and also when the industry is incredibly tough and everything's changing. So these are designed, these sessions, to share insights, best practice from people in the industry who are performing really, really well right now in terms of working with their clients and their team. So really keen to hear what James has to say right now. And it's worth having to think about how you can potentially take some of these ideas into your businesses as well and adopt them. So James, I'm going to hand over to you for the majority of this, but I'm really keen just to find out from you a bit more about yourself, your role, and also just to start off your take on what's happening in the industry. Sure, okay. Um, so, yeah, um, as you said, I have a partnership team at the, um, uh, at the Drum. Um, it's, um, it's, it's been an absolute roller coaster for the last couple of weeks, as, as I'm sure you've experienced, and I'm sure anyone watching has probably experienced the same thing. Um, we've, um, we were planning to run events uh, in the first half of this year, as, as a lot of um, uh, com you know, uh, companies in the B2B space will, will have done. Um, we were planning to run activations alongside Advertising with Europe and, and also um, um, at South by Southwest in, in Austin, Texas. And we had um, clients all kind of set up with campaigns ready to roll. Um, and then sort of about, I guess, four weeks ago, we realized that, that those events, um, if they were gonna go ahead, probably shouldn't. And, and the right thing to do would be just to pull back from it. So we did. Um, and we, um, we, we, we sort of pivoted to um, running a digital festival, um, which we managed to pull out the bag in um, a very short uh, space of time. So we launched the Digital Transformation Festival. What uh, was the time period? How long did that take? Uh, two weeks. It was a two week turnaround, yeah. So it was, <laughs> it, was, uh, um, it was a very, very, very rapid bit of decision making. And um, we, we had to build a studio. Um, we had to hire some office space next to us to build the studio in. Um, yeah an entire back-end platform um, and then we had to get all of the speakers and, and the, all of the usual event logistics in place um, so it was a pretty incredible um, um, bit of turnaround um, and uh, actually it's, it's been an incredibly invigorating um, experience as well for the, for the team and I guess that that kind of feeds into probably um, some of the things we want to touch on today actually is around actually how do you keep a, a sales team sort of performing at a high level in, in, in kind of unprecedented times. So that, that's, that's been a little, a little flavour of what we've been through the last sort of few weeks. And, and I was looking at it earlier, actually. So it's hosted on your website, isn't it? So it's not like yeah. a virtual event and using some crazy new technology. It's literally positioned on there as uh, video streams, etc. Yeah, exactly. So, so we, we've had to, um, I mean, we talk a lot about innovation and digital transformation and, and, and all these kinds of things, but we've, we've had to really eat our own dog food with this because, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, uh, we, we've been sort of dabbling with, um, um, you know, innovation around digital content for, for a while now. We launched the drum show, um, which is a TV show, um, back in the last year. And we were one of the first, um, um, media platforms, you know, live broadcasting, uh, content on, on LinkedIn. Um, and, um, so, so, you know, the experience of doing that sort of gave us a, a, a bit of a direction of, of how, you know, what we could do and how we could do it. Um, and then there was just a few things converging at, at, at the right sort of time to, to enable us to actually deliver it in the time frame we did. Um, but, um, but, you know, fundamentally it took, it took a lot of hard work and, and um, um, you know, a, a bit of, um, you know, brave and bold ambition as well to pull it off. So, um, you know, re really proud of the team that they've done it and actually the markets responded to, to it quite well as well. Yeah. Uh, going to ask that sorry to interrupt but the the and i really want to find out about the team in a minute and how you've kind of helped them do what they're doing and it sounds like they're performing brilliantly which is amazing right now but in terms of how the market responded you said they responded well like what was the event success how what was the impact how did it work um so first of all it was a question of going back to our existing partners and, and inviting them to, to to sort of take part in it and and some of them were very enthusiastic about it, others less so, because it, it didn't necessarily fit the original brief that we gave them. And, and yeah. I think in, in times like this, it's important to show flexibility to your clients. And so we were, you know, we, we didn't force anyone to do it. We, you know, we, we've offered people um, the opportunity to delay or, or you know, um, participate in other ways. And, and um, the ones that, that, that wanted to, to take part in it, um, 
uh, we're glad they did it in the end, I think, because we, we've actually delivered some great results. We've had over 8,000 uh, registrations for um, digital transformation festival sessions over the past um, three weeks. Um, I think 4,000 unique registrations, an average of um, approaching 200 per session. And each of those um, registrations is a lead that we can give back to our clients as well. So it's been, um, you know, we, we, we've been able to deliver really, really good um, content marketing solutions and lead gen to clients at a time when no one else has been able to do that. So um, yeah, that, that, that's been a real sort of big thing for us um, to, to be able to, because everyone's still working, right? Everyone's still got targets to hit. Everyone still needs to yeah. engage with their clients. And we, we've actually been able to, to, to provide a route to market for them. So, so that, that's where we've, we've actually had a good response from, from, from the market. Could, could you go into that a bit more? So if we now look at your sales teams, um, would just first off, just tell us a bit about your sales teams because obviously seem to be um, really motivated and invigorated right now mm -hmm. and, and performing well, which is brilliant. Um, but just tell me about kind of how they've responded and, and also how they went to the market with this new proposition, I think would be interesting for people. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I mean, we, we, um, we, we, we had to sort of sit down and have a bit of an honest conversation um, amongst the team about how we would approach this because there were some concerns around, you know, is this the right time to be going out to the market with, with quite a bullish sort of sales proposition. Um, and, um, you know, looking at it objectively, the, the, the drums mission is, is and, and, um, and always has been to, to help marketers to change the world. And, uh, you know, the situation and position that we find ourselves in right now, that mission has never been more relevant. Um, and actually, um, you know, uh, as, as I said before, all of our customers are still working. They're working from home, but they're still working. They've still got real life challenges to, you know, to, to overcome. And our job as, as salespeople is, is to help them to overcome those challenges. So um, we've, we've got a duty to get out there to, to, those, um, to, to our customers and find out exactly what can we do to help them and how can we serve them in, in, in this market? Because it's difficult for everyone. It's not just for us. So. Um, you know, there are some companies that are pulling up the draw bridges and batting down hatches and everything like that. But actually, if you look at what's going on right now, um, I, I don't know about you, Rob, but I've, I mean, I've, I've been um, in, in sort of B2B media for 15 years and, and the majority of that time has been spent kind of nudging companies along incrementally on, on sort of purchasing, purchasing decision-making journeys. And suddenly people are making massive decisions overnight about the future of their business. Um, yeah. So it's a really, really interesting time to be actually in the market and having conversations um, and, and, you know, promoting what, what you do and why you exist and why people should care. That's so interesting. So one of the things we often talk about Flume, I mean, before this time is the amount of decision makers involved in decisions and how long those decisions take. But almost the opposite is happening sometimes with some companies where they're like, we've got to make a quick decision here because we've got to make the right decision for our future. So are you yeah. suggesting that actually some of those big decisions to kind of work with you, for example, have happened quicker than they may have done otherwise? Absolutely. Well, I mean, one, one of the things we found is that um, suddenly, and, and, and this is not something that, that we expect to, to continue for any length of time because um, most companies in our space are, are making the moves to, to, to where we are now um, in terms of the digital offering. Um, but but certainly for the last few weeks, we've we've been one of the only games in town when it comes to actually, you know, if you've got if you've got a message for the market and you want to engage with people and you want to do lead gen right now, um, your options are very limited. There's no conferences happening anywhere in the world at the moment. Um, so how do you actually how do you get out there and how do you say your message and what are you going to say when you get there? Um, and, and you know, we exist to actually help people to to have those conversations, but also to to help position themselves and, and, um, and, and, you know, help connect with, with, with their customers. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just been a, 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 a really, um, a really interesting journey and, and, and quite a, um, a, you know, it's a testing time for everyone, right? Our customers and our customers, customers and us and, and you and everyone is, is in a very similar boat in terms of the kinds of decisions that, that, that are having to be made in order to, to sort of, um, you know, keep the lights on. And, and that's what makes it such a dynamic time to, to, to sort of be active and out there. One of the um, things that I say it's almost like our tagline at Flume and has been for about nine years now, but it's never been more relevant than right now, is that one of our big beliefs is that the way that clients buy and make decisions has turned on its head and what works and sells will never be the same. And I don't think that's ever been more true than right now, but I'm keen with kind of that in mind to find out in terms of your sales teams and how they're working with clients, 
have they done anything different? Are they approaching things in a different way with their clients? Is there anything they've found kind of works, doesn't work right now for clients and with working with clients? Um, I guess one of the advantages that, 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 um, that we've had as a team um, comes from the fact that um, our, our sort of starting position is that we are a, a truly customer centric um, uh, team um, and, and a, a customer centric business. And I say that as someone who's worked for a lot of companies that, that like to position themselves as customer centric or think of themselves as customer centric, but really aren't at all, they're product centric. And yeah. what that means is, um, you know, a, across the drum, we've, we've got a huge array of different um, ways and means of, of, you know, connecting with, um, you know, with, with marketers and, um, you know, whether that's brands or agencies or, or, or um, um, publishers and platforms. Um, as a sales team, we are quite agnostic as to, to which particular products you, you buy from us. And, and the consultation is, the, the consultative approach is actually, um, we go to our customers with an open mind about what it is they want to say, and, and we can make, you know, sort of genuine recommendations about the best way of, of, um, of, of reaching those markets. So we're not going to clients saying, you should, you should sponsor a conference, you should, you know, you should buy some exhibition space, or you should do some advertising. We're, we're, we're listening to what they got to say and what their challenges are and we're making recommendations based on that so this transition has been um you know the, the way that we engage with our clients it hasn't really changed that much we're still having those conversations the thing that's changed is the things that are feasible now <laughs> have changed a lot so we might want to do a conference but that, that that's not going to happen so what can we do instead and how close to, to that conference experience can we get um by doing things digitally so you know we, we've had to invite our clients to kind of take a bit of a journey with us but but also be mindful of the fact that that, that the alternatives don't don't really exist at the moment so um that that's you know that that's been quite a sort of i, I guess a, a kind of refreshing and, and um uh engaging experience both for us and, and for for our, our our partners as well and and you know as i said before that they've um you know everybody's approached this with with a a, a good deal of kind of um um you know being open-minded and and uh um, and and with, with, with good faith, and, and that, that's where I think we've, we've managed to have some, some good inroads with, with, with new clients. So I'm um, finding it's really interesting. I'm going to go off on a slight tangent, but one of the things that I've heard you talk about before, um, and, and we definitely advocate massively at Flume, is the idea of educating clients on new ideas and perspectives and bringing in that kind of teaching element to help them make safer and better decisions for their futures and a big part of that in media and events i was going to say quite obviously but a lot of people don't do this is to shift that client into the head of the audience and get them to realize what that audience need right now to get the audience from where they are to where the client needs to get them to how much of your team or of you focused on at the moment with your clients getting them into that audience's head and kind of getting them to think from their perspective. Has that been an important bit? Uh, yeah, so I mean, go, going back to, to what I was saying before um, about the, the, some, some of the doubts that, that, that can creep into to the head of the salesperson, that particularly in times like this, is, you know, should I be really going banging on clients' doors and asking them for money at a time like this? Um, and actually, that's, that's the wrong way to look at it. Uh, it's, it's actually, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're going out there to market to, with, with, with solutions to help people and to help people to hit their goals and to hit their objectives. Um, and, and, and I think that that's the conversation to have with clients as well. And, and as I was saying before, like the, this is such a disrupted marketplace and decisions are, are, are being taken that in normal times, in a, in a normal market, the, the scale of decision making that's happening would really be very exciting to a lot of our customers to be yeah. in those kinds of conversations. So whilst it's very natural for people to think, right, we, we need to scale back on our budgets and we need to sort of not execute on any of our plans. Um, for companies that, that that are you know prepared to to be bold and, and to act with pace um there are huge opportunities in this market and, and i think where where we where i'm trying to get the, our sales team to think of themselves and, and and where i think they've actually been responded quite quite well to this is um you know to to, to kind of um see those opportunities and, and to actually see themselves as being able to facilitate those opportunities for their clients um, because really what, what we're looking at is how we emerge from this particular crisis. You know, what kind of team do we want to be? Um, and and how, how do we want to 
um, you know, how we respond in, in these kinds of times and these situations really define who we are. And, and that kind of sets, um, you know, the, the, the future for us as well, really. So, yeah. um, so I think approaching this with, with positivity, thinking about the fact that in all downturns and all recessions in history, there are winners and losers. And, and our focus has is, is got to be on how do you be a winner? Um, that, that, that kind of mindset and that kind of thinking really translates to the customer as well, I think. And, yeah. and you know, that, that's, that, to, to me, that, that's how you, you, you need to kind of navigate these, these times because there, there is a lot of uncertainty, but, but with it, there is opportunity. So there's been a lot of praise about kind of your team and it sounds like they're working brilliantly and doing things for the right reasons, I think is something that comes through here for your clients and, and adding the right value that they need to. And they've to a degree been doing that. And so they're set up to do that and continue that through. Makes sense. But I'm sure that there is part of this, which might be down to the leadership as well. So I'm just kind of keen in terms oh, me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, which is kind of why we're here, but we've kind of got wrapped up in this other bit, but the um i suppose what's your secret what are you what are you doing um how are you working with your team what are you finding that's worked um and it, it sounds like you are a very tight team and i know before this chat here we were talking about how much time we're kind of spending on zoom talking to different people and it seems like we've been more contact than ever but what, what are yeah. you doing that's working uh, anything you've realized that maybe doesn't work or mistakes you've made as well would be really keen to find out well uh, i mean i I'd, um uh, I, I think the the only thing that I've done right is to to hire the right people. Um, because for me, I, I you know you look at what what can you control um, and what can't you control. And I know the kinds of people that I can work with and the kinds of people that I can't. And so, in approaching this role, I, I took a lot of time making sure that that I was bringing in the right kinds of people for for. For, for me that are on the, the, the kind of wavelength that I can operate with and I'd say any sales leader needs to do that because um, you can't expect to change people and you can't expect to change yourself you know dramatically um, so so there needs to be a sort of fundamental level of, of, of understanding um, and for me like I, I, I'm not a micromanager and, and that is probably a, a strength in times like this because you can't micromanage people when they're you know everyone's working remotely uh, or you can try but I don't think it's, it's necessarily a recipe for success so um, uh, but but yeah, beyond that, I mean, it's it's all down to the to the team and, and the way that um, you know the, the the way they're responding is you know is is, is just been you know quite inspiring really because um, it, it it has been really really tough on on them um, you know um, and on the business and, and on everyone really all of our customers as well have, have, you know these these are these are really really difficult times um, but but yeah I mean it's it's the attitude that I think is is really important and and the ability to kind of remain focused on, on the bigger picture um, and, and to take positivity into, into every day is, um, th these are the kinds of qualities I look for in a team. Um, uh, and, and you know, the, 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 the team um, that I'm working with has, has shown that in abundance and it's been, it's been great to see. Question from a webinar that we ran last week, um, which was on leading remote sales teams. Um, which actually I, I didn't purposefully ignore, but it didn't come up on my crowdcast and then I got ribbed for it afterwards by the person who asked and I hadn't answered it. So I'm just going to ask your take right. on it. Maybe this will appease them a little bit. Um, but what, what's your take on kind of targets and how to um, set targets in a time where the goalposts are changing and actually it's, well, you're in a slightly different position here because of the way you guys have rapidly and had, um, kind of set up the event um in terms of the digital transformation festival but uh, what advice would you kind of have for people in terms of kind of setting kpi setting targets with teams to keep them motivated because i think a lot of people are struggling with that yeah no um and it's a really good question and i'm sure it's one that my team will be paying close attention to <laughs> yeah i'm asking uh, you i want your answer <laughs> go back to them. Uh, my, my take on this is that um you know the the the, the business is asking a lot of, of um you know of, of the sales team at the moment um and not just the sales team every team um you know um but in terms of of the the kind of cash flow revenue position of, of the company it's so so important that um you know our team actually delivers um and, and everyone's aware of that and everyone's aware of that pressure and and i think it's um you know it's, it's important that 
um, the team is is motivated anyway to do a good job, and I think I think the team is. Um, as far as it goes with 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 targets, um, you know, we've actually um, we, we've been we've been doing pretty well as a team in, in terms of um, performance versus target for the year so far, and I'm determined to kind of con continue on that path. And, and where we're sat right now, I don't think it's um, you know it's, it's not an urgent issue that that, that we we need to kind of um, address looking at performance versus target but but certainly what I would not allow to, to sort of happen for a sustained period of time is a situation where targets are not um, not achievable for anyone yeah. um, and you know especially when the team are, are you know working really hard and are, and are highly motivated and um, I, I you know you've, you've got to be careful in this kind of situation where everyone is splintered out into different locations and not necessarily spending that much time you know, with each other that, that the, um, you know, you, you don't want sort of people to become demotivated. So um, I, I think flexibility is really important. We've had to show a lot of that with our customers and, and we've had to, as, as you know, um, with, with each other as, as, you know, as team, team members, everyone has to be flexible with their time. Um, so, so I think uh, when it comes to actually looking at, at, at targets and things like that um, and, and uh, you know, how people are, are rewarded for, for good performance and what, what actually is good performance in, in this particular scenario um, that that needs to be looked at sort of you know probably a little bit more regularly than it would be in, a, in sort yeah. of normal business as usual circumstances yeah okay really interesting so um, we're probably towards the end of our time uh, well over our allotted time actually but uh, I'm really quite fascinated by what you're saying so um, uh, one kind of final question for you so um, actually no two number one what's the kind of main thing the, if you would say one thing you've learned as a sales leader over the past three, four weeks, ever since this has kind of um, gone to the scale it's gone to, um, what, what's the main thing you've kind of taken on board? Um, I, for, for me, um, um, it's been interesting to, to see how, um, how resilience has come from the preparation or, or, or the, the, the kind of, um, I guess the, the sort of longer term um, planning that, that's, that's been put into place within the team and, yeah. and how that's given us an edge. Um, I think there's a lot of people in business who, who, are, who, who just look at the short term. Um, and, and, you know, this is true of a lot, if not most of the sales teams I've worked in, um, you know, the short term is, is, is um, always trumps everything. Um, whereas I think if you're, um, if you're able to kind of build a team around a set of values that aren't necessarily just all about the kind of short-term win um, and also um, put your sales team at the heart of the, the business without necessarily, um, you know, making it all about products, then that, that actually stands you in good stead for these kinds of situations when, when you have to pivot. Um, so I think we've benefited from that, um, which is, uh, you know, it's, which, which is good. It's, it's kind of a vindication in, in, in a sense of, of, of a strategy that, that wasn't necessarily always that obvious. Um, um but but yeah i don't know it's uh it, it's it, it's very very early days i think in in this particular yeah. um you know business environment so so it's not there's certainly no room for complacency on anything i mean ultimately i think what you're saying which i've I found fascinating is that the drum has and always kind of, kind of has had that purpose there's this kind of central reason you exist and that's yeah. given you strength and confidence and ability to pivot and to remain resilient throughout this it's certainly given us um, a, a, a really compelling reason to, to go to the market with um, with this, the, the solutions that we have now. Um, as, as I said before, I mean, uh, we believe marketing can change the world, and, and that that is a message that has never been more relevant because the world is changing all around us, and, and marketers, um, you know, our core audience really need the the insight and um, the education and knowledge and information that, that we're providing. So the fact that we've been able to to, to allow the um, industry to to connect and, and engage with itself at this time when when all of the other ways of, of connecting and communicating have, have been systematically shut down you know that's just been a, a testament to um to, to the whole team at, at, at the drum and um you know um obviously it's not just about the sales team it's it's about all of the support teams as well that, that have been there to um to sort of um you know help make it all happen so so yeah last question i swear so I'm asking everyone this one tip. If you had one tip for salespeople right now in this situation, and it may tap in some of the stuff you've already said, but if there's one bit of advice you would give, what would it be? I think stay focused because 
in in this market and, and i'm sure you've been through um a, you know a few downturns yourself um I have um you're going to get a lot more kickbacks um than you are people saying yes um but but actually i think if you approach it with the right mindset and, and the fact that you're there to help people um you know that that, that will turn around uh, and, and it will come back and people will remember the fact that you know you, you you're the person that's there trying to help them ultimately and when when the budgets do start to get released they'll be um they'll, they'll be coming back to you um and they'll remember you for that so so i'd say just just stay focused and, and don't lose heart and keep going i think that that is uh, a key message is always think how do you want to be remembered because yeah if you're remembered in the right way then you'll be able to bounce out of this in a much more positive position yeah absolutely 100 percent so James, thank you so, so much for your time. Apologies, it's slightly over <laughs> the allocated 15 minutes we decided on having, I think it's been about three hours. But really, really interesting to find out how you guys are adapting and also what you're doing as a sales leader and what your sales teams are doing as well. It's been really fascinating. So I hope um, you guys at home have found that useful. Hopefully there's one or two pieces in there that you might be able to take into your own work or share with your teams to help them adapt more. We'll be keeping doing these Flume Cells chats throughout the week. We're going to try and aim for two a week, probably putting them out on Tuesdays and Fridays. We'll be confirming that soon. But we'll be working with, as we have with James, some of the most uh, forward-thinking leaders and salespeople. So if you've got people you want to nominate, who you think have things to say that could help the industry, please share with us. Please also share this um, in terms of LinkedIn to your network like it and comment give us ideas and we'll keep on doing what we can at Bloom sales training to help you and your teams navigate these really tough times james thanks so much for your time have an amazing weekend and you guys have an amazing weekend too thank you very much oh thanks a lot